Whenever you all are ready, could you talk through what you've built? Do you want to start or should you want to start? You can go over. All right. So uh, we've built a control system for the clock tower, specifically McGraw clock tower, um, and the LEDs within them. So you, a lot of, um, a popular thing on campus is to look at the clock tower when they make uh, custom lighting and to see, you know, the clock tower changing faces. But the LED control system is currently a bit antiquated. Um, there are some extra features that we'd like. Um, the remote commonly gets lost and it's not super intuitive on how to use it. So we made our own system with some of the features that we've desired. Um, so for a bit of context, the current LED setup we have, you can see on my computer screen. So we went in there and we took a picture of the LED strips that they have. These were commercially available. Um, and so we figured out what all these pins are. These are RGBW LEDs. Um, so you can see up here, there's a positive uh, 12 volt line. And then there are four lines here that PWM the respective colors to ground. So we made sort of a, a schematic model down here of what this represents. Um, so at a high level, we want a way to have more control over s these switches, being able to configure, you know, how much the duty cycle, which controls the amount of brightness of each color, um, as well as what they might respond to. So whether, you know, how can we change the color? How can we have it respond to perhaps external events like um, different uh, light or audio input? Mm -hmm. um, to that end, we have sort of three different types of boards. We have our main control board here. This is for, um, so the user can slide the amount of um, color that they want, as well as some different switching of modes that we operate in. We haven't gotten all of them supported quite yet, but we have enough um, that we think is, you know, certainly an improvement over the state of the art as of right now. We have our sensor board over here. So this is going to live up closer to the bells and gather sensor measurements such as audio and light data. And then these boards over here are the face boards. So these are what actually drive the LEDs. Um, we have a couple status LEDs, but the big thing on here is the output similar to what you saw in the picture before. So we have, you know, 12 volt RGB and then W, which we're not using for this demo. Mm -hmm. um, and then these four um, high power transistors that will PWM these signals to ground. Okay. Yep, I guess uh, some architecture stuff. All these three boards are connected using these CAN wires. Um, and the idea is for four of these boards to be supported at once, but we just have one hooked up for the demo. Um, and right now we have it hooked up to an RGB light rather than RGBW light. So mm -hmm. we've disabled the RGBW, uh, RGB to RGBW conversion and all that stuff. Um, so in the system, currently we're running on on mode, which is the default uh, constant mode uh -huh. and what that means is these switches here directly control the color of the light over there um, so as you can see if I slide up the green it goes nice and smoothly from dim to bright uh, if I add some blue you'll see the blue appears in the light and then you end up with a teal color and then add the red and then you get a white this LED is not the most white but that's as white as we're gonna get here and then you can smoothly slide these up and down and so sort of explaining what Edmund is monitoring as well over there. So the under, you know, a simple version of this would just connect up these switches to the LEDs, but this is a more distributed system. We don't have access directly next to the LEDs. So we're communicating all of that different, um, those different color values over the CAN bus to the face board, which then drives these transistors to the appropriate uh, duty rate to match the amount. Sure. And you said that in the actual clock tower, there will be a few of these yeah. LED driver boards. Exactly. Okay. So we will have four of those. The other three are around here somewhere. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. And so that brings up another good thing, which is powering all these devices. Um, so the controller board and uh, sensor board will be near enough to outlets that we can power them via five volt barrel jacks. Okay. Uh, but these boards, these will be in uh, the clock faces, which don't have an outlet. Instead, they have uh, pre-existing 12 volt converters. We wanted to utilize those. So over here, you can see there's a 12 volt input that it can run off of. You can see right now that we're not using um, any external supply. Uh -huh. um, we're not having this connected up to anything else. So all the power is coming from here. Um, that's what's helping drive these LEDs at 12 volts. And then we also step that down to five volts as an input to VSYS, which the Raspberry Pi steps down to 3.3 to run the rest cool. of the system. Cool. I guess... Really nice. And yeah, then do I you guess want to do you... audio? Yeah, we can do audio mode. Let's... Oh, and then we have the other face board. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. thank you. So this was a lot of soldering, but... Yeah. 
Okay, very nice. Okay, and I guess swap it over to the other mode. Um, and then, so in music mode, the idea is we still have these things to set color, uh -huh. but after afterwards, the amplitude that's read by the microphone right here, um, it, it'll change the brightness based on the amplitude it measures. And uh -huh. essentially the way it does that right now is it takes samples over 0.1 seconds and it finds the difference between the loudest sample and the quietest sample. Uh -huh. And that difference is what it sends as the amplitude. Okay. Um, so if we slide this guy up, um, Aiden, do you want to like clap or something? See it <laughs> cool. nice and bright. And you can imagine that, you know, this is certainly much more responsive than a bell decaying might yeah. be. Yeah. Um, so we should be able to get good results there as well, but yeah. So the ultimate vision is that this will allow for the clock face to essentially dance in response to the mm -hmm. Exactly, bell. sort of have a reactive yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah, like your iTunes 2010 audio synthesizer. Yeah, sure. And you can do it with other colors as well. So that, that's the nice thing is we can still change the colors. So if we want, I don't know. Uh, we want to dance pink, you yeah. can still have it be pink. And so so when you're adjusting the colors, that's being communicated from this board to the LED board over a CAN bus. Mm -hmm. Correct. So the sensor, does the, does the sensor board also communicate to the LED driver board by way of that CAN bus? Um, indirectly, I think you would say. So all the main control loop is running on this control board. Uh -huh. So what's actually going on here when we clap is underlying what happens is the microphone samples it. The Raspberry Pi Pico here collects all the samples, determines the amplitude, sends it over to the control board. The control board notices that it's in music mode and uses that to adjust the light values from these, sends that over the same shared bus to the face board, gotcha. which then in response changes the LED brightness. Nice. So the face boards themselves are pretty simple. All they do is take two messages, like on and off, and the color. Um, so this way, the control board is the one that manages all the like math and stuff like that. And it seems like a wise design decision to have only one board that can ever tell the LEDs what to do. Correct. Yeah. So these these boards aren't trying to make decisions for themselves. Yeah. Um, but are instead just mostly acting as clients um, or as servers, I guess you would say, to this client, which is telling all of them what to do. Yeah. Really nice. And I'll just mention for sake of the demo that part of the context of this is that Aiden is a chimes master here and so plays these bells a lot and is familiar with this system. Yep. Really nice, really nice boards. Nice comic sans. <laughs> awesome. Thank you all. That's a really, really cool demo.